any questions. Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where we are indeed going to have some questions as we re uh, dive back into Little Guardsmen. Um, so the country is uh, now under siege. The royal wedding did not quite go as planned. I think it's fairly safe to say. Um, but let's find out what we're going to be doing from now on. Did you see my dad? He was there. He looked okay. No, I meant questions about the new drafting procedure. It was in the weekly update video. You mean the propaganda video? You know what propaganda is? I didn't until I watched that video. Listen, people are going to come up asking about joining the army. It's your job to decide if they're a good fit, especially considering who else is coming to enlist that day. I thought my job was to decide who to let pass the gate. That's also your job. This is wartime. You have to do two things now. I wish my dad was here. He'd show me how to get out of doing two things. <laughs> Up until now, we've tolerated a two-star average with you, guardsmen. Not anymore. We are dancing on a knife's edge here. So now you have to maintain a 2.5-star average, or it's game over. Oh, and if you don't draft the right people, we could lose the war. Also, game over. Wait, no pressure. Actively or literally? Both. Oh my god. Well, I'm gonna go. You're just gonna leave after dropping something that heavy on me? Fine, I'll stay. We can tutorial some more. Actually, I'm starting to see the appeal of your first plan. I thought you might. Goodbye, Lil. Wow, okay, so... Well, we'll see how this goes, I suppose. After months of this siege, the Sprawl's resources, namely its food stores, have reached a new dangerous low. If a guard discovers any means to improve our dwindling food supply, you are to contact either myself or Lieutenant Stryker. Failure to contract leadership will be reflected in your star rating. Okay. Related, any individuals or groups coming from outside the Sprawl who will burden our meagre food supply are to be carefully vetted. Like with item one, the decision to admit anyone who fits the description should be run by either me or Ash. Striker. Best of luck to those becoming responsible for drafting individuals for service on the front lines. Remember, there's always more than meets the eye. And although it may seem like sending more people to the fray is the right idea, that is not always the case. Hey, Gardos. I'm breaking in a new assistant down here in the dungeon. Go easy on him if you get him when you call. Go easy on him if you get him when you call. No, okay. I don't really know how this is going to play out, to be honest. Um, Alright, but we're going to, I think, um, oop. let's go with one in there for now. Two metal detector, two of those, two of those, one of those. I'll go back to the decoder ring. So we can put something, we can fill up, every, well, okay, well, we can't fill up truth spear. I'm going to put the bad crystal in there just so we've got it the slots filled up uh, and we'll see how we go I think I said I had six people today excuse me ma'am is this the place where a fella could sign up to join that war that's going on it is why do you know someone who's looking to sign up sure do ma'am his name is Elmer John and you're looking at him I'm talking about me ma'am yeah I got that Okay. Now what's a guy like you doing wanting to fight in a war like this? I fight for one thing and one thing only. My one and only love, Glory Ann. Uh... Okay. That's very heroic, I guess. This Glory Ann, is she your sweetheart? She sure is. And does Glory Ann feel the same way about you? She sure does. At least, I thought she did. I don't know what any of the tools would really bring to this, so let's just keep talking. Dish the details, Elmer. What happened? Well, you see, ma'am, how it is is like... It's like this, you see. It all happened this way, it was. Elmer, faster with the dishing. I'm sorry, ma'am. It's just all too painful to talk about. We were engaged to be married, and I caught her in the arms of another man. My neighbor, Bosco. Okay. How dare she? I know! 
So you're heartbroken and running away to war? Exactly. Let's do, um, let's just talk to him again. Do you really think running off to war with a broken heart is the right thing to do? Have you tried talking to her about it? No way, no how, no ma'am. The minute I saw them together, I jumped to the first conclusion in my head and left town to do the first thing I thought of doing. <laughs> now, are you going to let me join up or what? You seem set on running away from your problems. Who am I to try and stop you? You're the one in charge of drafting people, aren't you? Oh, right. I am. I guess I could stop you if I wanted to. All right, well, I'm going to let him in. I imagine we're going to see Bosco at some point. Uh, yeah. Okay. You're being sent to the front line, soldier. There's no turning back now, Elmer. Oh, Glory Ann, who I caught in the arms of another man. Maybe joining up will make you love me enough so we can spend our lives together. Then I won't have to run off and join the army. <laughs> There's a shred of logic in that. How did we do? Oh, didn't get a star rating. Ah, then. it's you again. I remember you, the miserable wretch who saw to me the last time I came to this repulsive, simmering carbuncle of a city. I remember you too. You're that unpleasant, obnoxious Ebenezer Scrooge knockoff. <laughs> Yes, we have met. All right, well, what's the dish? What's the it is my what intention to? to go straight to the bank of the sprawl and have my substantial monies removed from this sinking barge of a city before the banks are overrun or worse, sacked. Mr. Dunn just needs to hear my confirmation number and I will have my fortune sheltered in a more rich people friendly nation. Jeez. You really think the people of the sprawl are dumb enough to sink their own bank? Inevitably. People flock to BS at the first real sign of danger. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we could try we could try a little truth spray on him, I suppose. Uh, let's see if the good if the bad crystal can work. Nope. All right. Well, we didn't use a slot, so let's uh, let's just use a real spray. Honestly, what does it all matter anyway? I've spent my entire life accumulating one of the largest fortunes in the sprawl, but what good is it without my darling whelp? If only I could speak with him again, I could leave all this money behind if it would get me back my whelp. Well, I imagine Welp is Malcolm's new assistant, so why don't we try ringing Malcolm? This is the dungeon of Malcolm the Great? Just read the cards! Oh, okay. <clears throat> this is the dungeon of Malcolm the Great! May I take a message? Wait, who is this? Who is this? Lil. Oh, Lil! It's me! Well! I thought so. Listen, there's someone here I think would like to speak with you. Go ahead. Well, is it really you? It is, Your Grace. Well, I never thought I'd see you again. Well, we are on the phone. How are you? Have you been treated poorly? No one ever treated me as poorly as you, sir. I miss you, well. I miss you too, sir. <laughs> Come, run away with me. We can leave this war behind us and start again with all of my money. Sir, I never cared a jot for your money. I only wanted to be with you. <laughs> oh, Welp, my heart sings. No matter what happens to me now, I will dedicate my remaining life to you. <laughs> what about your remaining money? I'll donate it to the poor. 
Just kidding. But I won't take it away with me today. Good enough. Get in there and reunite with your friend. Cool. Okay. Yay! True love conquers all. Way to go, Cupid. <laughs> Who would have thought that Grumpkin, T. Dankworth and Welp would be the, uh, the greatest love story in the game? <laughs> little slunk of a man. I have no idea what you're talking about. Did a hopelessly heartbroken fella by the name of Elmer John come by this way? Spouting a crazy notion like running off and joining the army? As a matter of fact, he did. Oh, Elmer John, what have you done? Tell me, did you allow that fool to throw his life away over nothing? I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you or not. I have to know if you sent him off to war, because if you didn't send him, then I'd like you to send me, to get as far away from that fool as possible. I take okay. it you're Glory Ann. That's me, Glory Ann. The same Glory Ann that was caught in the arms of another man? It's not what it looked like, and if Elmer John had stuck around for more than a second, I could have explained that to him. So what? You're sick of these wonk-headed men getting all hot and bothered and making hasty decisions over something that could have been settled by a rational conversation? <laughs> exactly! No, we'll keep talking to her, I think. Even if that fool Elmer John is drafted as well, and he's there waiting for me with his big dumb eyes and his cutie pie dimples, it won't matter. He won't be able to smooth talk his way back into my heart after doing something so stupid like running off and joining the war. At this point, it doesn't matter if you let him in or not. Either way, I've made up my mind. Come on. You really don't want to know if he was or wasn't drafted? What if he's at home waiting for you with a big old apology banner that says, I'm a fool, take me back. He's run out of apology banners this time. Him and his suspicious mind. Not to mention the wartime measures prohibiting the sale of fabric for such frivolities. Um, I think we just talked to her a third time. Dorian, I gotta know. Did Elmer John really find you in the arms of another man? That's only what Elmer thought he saw. It all started when that big loud Bosco from Two Houses Over came round like he always does to try to court me again. I explained to him that Elmer John had asked for my hand and that I had said yes. And then Bosco explodes and says he's gonna smash Elmer's head like a jug. So I lunged at Bosco to hold him back. The big brute! That's what Elmer saw. And the next thing I know, he's crying about going off to war. Sounds like before you go and do the same thing, Elmer's gone and done and run off with a hurt heart. Maybe y'all should be slowing your ride and talking it through too. Am I right? Why are you talking like that? I thought you wanted to. I sure don't. Can you just do me a favor and do the opposite of what you did for him, for me? That's confusing, but okay. I'm actually going to send her in. I think if they are together and they'll talk it through, they'll be alright. So we're going to draft her too. And, uh, yeah, they can they can have a, a proper conversation. Now, I'm not doing this because I drafted Elmer John and I want you two to be together. <laughs> I understand. And I'm not doing this because I didn't draft Elmer John and I'm trying to keep you two apart. Understood. I'm doing this because I think you'd make a mighty fine soldier, soldier. You're drafted. We'll see how that pans out. I'm hoping they'll, they'll sort things out. Oh, hello, Lil. Isn't it an absolutely beautiful day? Sun's shining, birds chirping. Why, a gobbo could almost sing about it. Who are you? That cuts me deep, Lil. It's me, Julian, a.k.a. Magnus the Magnificent's Magnificent Lower Half. <laughs> we ate orange slices together? Oh, yeah. Hey. Uh... Let's talk to him first. I'm just coming from a conference of GLA members from different nations looking to help each other out. 
The GLA sounds like it's thriving. It sure is. We made some major inroads with a sympathetic group of Petrardian miners. They've offered to dig tunnels that will bring food to the sprawl without anyone knowing. Ooh. I hope we can get these plans to Queen Desdemona for her <clears throat> stamp of approval. Then we can get things underway. Uh, but we'll return it and let him in, I think. You should take these to the Queen. I'm on my way there now. So let's talk to uh, talk to Ash. Tunnel plans to increase our dwindling food supplies. Let him in post haste. Let him in. The city's best and brightest will go over the map, and construction will begin in no time. We have food. We have food. Well done, child. Okay, sounds good. Let's let him in. Lil, it is always a pleasure. Mm. Julian, I hope you have a fantastic day. Do you really mean that? I sincerely do. Keep up the great work, friend. Thanks, Lil. You're one of the good ones. Yay, the tunnel plans are underway. Soon there will be more food for the people of the sprawl. Well done. Hey, Lil. Listen, I wanted to say I know things must be tough for you with Hamish out on the front lines and... Thanks for checking in. I appreciate it, Cecil. I'm doing all right. That's good to hear. If you ever need someone to talk to, you know where to find me. I'm actually not sure I do know where to find you. Oh, well, normally it would be at the barracks, but for the foreseeable future, I'll be running security for Her Majesty Princess... Sorry, Queen Desdemona. After you finished your shift, Her Majesty and the Royal Consort have asked to see you. Oh, Cecil, once again, we dance this dance. You come to escort me to bigger and bigger meetings. I make fun of you. Quite the team we are. I should have stayed in school. <laughs> She's meeting with some high-ranking member of the Mages Guild to discuss battle strategy. To be honest, the Guild hasn't been very supportive of how Her Majesty has handled things. She was looking for a bit of backup and wanted you specifically. Well, she can count on me. I hope. I hope so, too. The fate of the Sprawl may rest in your hands. It always does, Cecil. I'll see you after my shift. Great, great. Thanks, Lil. And if you're right, your dad, tell him we all wish him well. I will. I know he'd love to hear it. See you later, Cecil. A familiar group of black-clad folk, uh, folk approaching the shed, weeping and moaning. You must help us, child! We have been left without shelter. It's awful. Scarborough has fallen. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk to them. I suspect the we're going to turn them away. Scarborough has been under constant siege for the majority of the war. Those bastards! Quite. We finally had to flee. We couldn't stand it any longer. We've been without food for days. Yes, everyone is rather hungry. I'm sure the Sprawl would have sent forces to help you if you had asked. I had no idea this was happening in Scarborough. Yes, it all happened rather suddenly. Shush, shush, shush. Laundry best kept in house diddums. Oh, what's going on here? Let's do a let's do a our last truth spray on them. I still miss my beloved Sprinkles. Boo hoo! I've been doing my best not to fantasize about poisoning my employer lately. Must not confess crimes. Must resist child's powerful spray. Gah. Excuse me, what? All right, all right, I did it. 
I lowered the bridge and let those... Bastards? Right, those bastards. I let them in. It was me. <laughs> he begins to sob. Oh, you sneak. You are hereby banished from the court of Scarborough. Prince Phineas was right. Soon the entire sprawl will fall to the might of the kingdom of Petrard. Oh, go away. Well spotted, Guardian. Listen, I'm just doing my job. And that's how you truth spray your way to success. Excellent line, m'lady. But that was... Oh, never mind. Even with that settled, I'm still not sure what to do with these people. Uh, let's ring, uh, let's ring Ash. Was it hurt? Was it just Striker for people we thought were going to have a negative effect on the food? Okay, either or. Uh, well, let's call Ash. Oh, my heart just breaks for the dear Duchess and the people of Scarborough. While our food supplies remain dangerously low, with the tunnel operation unlocked thanks to you, we should just be able to feed everyone, including these refugees. You may let them in. Ah, good to know. Cool. Okay, in they go. Bless you, dear child. Yes, thanks awfully. As I said, we are incredibly hungry. There should be enough food for your people. We have a new plan to bring more into the sprawl. Regardless, you are a hero in the history of Scarborough. If our lands are ever restored to us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I think we did that pretty good. Yay, you did the right thing in a, in a previous turn. You did the right thing in a previous turn. You unmasked a traitor and you were kind to refugees. Four stars. Yay. Oh, this is going to be bust, Where do though, I isn't enlist? It? You're there. Here. Then what are you waiting for? Sign me up already. The name is Bosco. I heard that lily-livered run Elmer John came by this way, and I want to catch up with him so I can smash his head like a jug. You're just the kind of guy we're looking for, but I'll need more than just a first name to sign you up. Hoolahan. Okay, Bosco Houlihan, and last thing, why do you want to smash Elmer's head like a jug? Because he's a fool. I trust it's common practice to go around smashing people's heads like jugs where you're from? Only if they're dumb enough to run away from a quality dame like Glorianne. So to be clear, you're mad that he ran away from Glorianne? Yes. Because you wouldn't run away from Glorianne if she wanted you. Yes, but she's made it clear that she doesn't. This little drama is wrapping up quite nicely. It will once I smash Elmer John's head like a jug. I don't think a head really smashes like a jug. How would you know? Did you grow up with hundreds of jugs around the house because your father was a jugsmith? Jugsmith? It's a real thing. <laughs> okay, well, I think we're going to send him packing, aren't we? We don't want him interfering with the other two, so. Sorry, Mr. Houlihan, but I won't be drafting you today. What are you going to do? Stop me? Me? No, I couldn't. But our soldiers would try to stop you, and if they couldn't stop you, well, then what are we even doing here? Elmer John can't hide from me forever. I'll catch up with him one day and smash his head like a jug. Never give up on your dreams. Bye. Oh, well, I think overall that went pretty well. Full marks. Due to your exceptional job performance, you were paid 30 gold for this shift. Sweet. Yep, nice. Oh, I did continue. I meant to go through them, but we saw them as, as they went by, didn't we? So, that's fine. 
Okay, what do we got? Oh, we got to go and visit the Queen, haven't we? Let's go do that then. Which is exactly why we must start using them immediately. The risk is too great. We need more time to study the long-term repercussions. A luxury we can ill afford. Your Majesty, Lil has arrived. Thank you, Cecil. Lil, thank goodness you're here. I've got a problem. You have an opportunity, Your Highness. You know Tyronia Sathanatos, I believe. I've had the pleasure, I guess. Yes, I remember this little guardsman. And Dr. B. Have you met Dr. Beatrix von Matterhorn Lil? I have. She works at the hole in the ground by the edge of town. Yes, I, I mean, it's an archaeological dig site, but yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, she's the one who gave me the chronometer 3000 on my first day. Ah, so she does have access to power crystal technology. I might have known. Wait, Lil has had access to power crystal technology this whole time? Maybe it's not as dangerous as we imagined. She seems fine. We don't know that. It's still too early. How long can we wait? How many brave soldiers of the sprawl must give their lives before we use the tools we have available? Let me fill you in on what's going on here. The Mages Guild feels that if they had access to power crystals, they could hold back the enemy and maybe even win the war outright. Okay, so why don't they go buy some? I know a guy in an alley. You know what? I'm gonna stop there. It's starting to sound weird. <laughs> they want all the crystals. Access to every dig site and existing stockpile in order to amplify their power. The good doctor could simply give us the blueprints. Or better yet, the working model the child has in her possession. This would allow our research to flourish in no time. Dr. Beatrix feels that there are too many unknown variables to use it safely on a larger scale. The Mage's Guild is and always has been reckless. There's no way I'm handing my research over to you. Not until I see the full effects on my human test guinea pig here. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> we both knew what this was. <laughs> well, Lil, you've been using power crystals at the guard shed. What do you think? Are they too dangerous? Yeah. They are way too dangerous. I use the chronometer 3000 under very specific circumstances. You start manipulating time out there in the everyday world, who knows where it could lead? Spoken like a scientist. Do you have a master's degree? Mm. How many times do I have to tell you people? I'm 12. Thank you for your counsel. I always appreciate having multiple opinions when it comes to big decisions. I have made up my mind. Dr. B will continue to oversee Lil's progress with the Chronometer 3000, and it will stay out of the hands of the Mage's Guild until we can be certain that it is safe to use in this war. Then at least allow the Guild access to the Crystal Reserve for the sake of the Sprawl's future. For the time being, the Reserve shall remain under my control. For the time being? My decision is final, Tyronius. You will find that I am not as easily swayed by you as my father was. Okay. Let's have a look at this thing. This looks just like the machine at the dig site. I wonder if it's got any good games on it. I'm glad calmer heads prevailed. At least for now. Why the princess listens to you, I will never understand. It's like you're the only two people in the dead mum's club. My mother's terrible. That should count for something. <laughs> Hopefully your words will not sway Desdemona on future matters. Yuck. <laughs> I'm just here to support my lady love. This choice has been eating her up inside. It's an important decision, and I want to do anything I can to help. I think she made a good choice. With you, I mean.
Thanks for your insight, Lil. I'm sorry to keep putting you in this position. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, I'll have a look at the war map, I suppose. There's Fievel Canyon, Kaladar, and of course Petrad. Marvog and the Sprawl smack dab in the center. Okay. Hey, you spoke well today, Lil. One more message for you today. I was instructed to tell you to head over to Malcolm's to meet the advisors. Good luck. Oh, okay. Sure that bodes well. there first then. No more goblins in the dungeon. Glad about that actually. Glad it kind of worked, kind of worked out. <laughs> What I don't understand is why would they have summoned her to a meeting without us there? Where's the fun in that? Without at least one of us there. And we all know it should have been me. You really believe that, don't you? When it comes down to the serious, important things that affect this kingdom, I think they'd rather take advice from the strategic mind of a ranking military officer. Rather than the two cents of a goofy, hopped-up lunatic with questionable taste in fashion. Or a lousy court jester. <laughs> yeah, ouch! We were both in the firing line on that one. Well, all that being said, you still weren't asked to join said quorum, but she was. And she is here. What? She is here. She's here. She's here. Lil is here. I really have to work on my subtlety. <laughs> Ah, Lil, you're here. We heard you got summoned to talk to the Queen and her new choice of partner for some kind of special quorum. How was it? Was it boring? What kind of boring things did they talk about while you were there? Tell us. I think if they wanted you to know what they talked about at the meeting, they would have invited you. She won't tell us anything. She's as useless as you two are. I take offense to that. Offense to what? Sorry, I got distracted. Can I go now? You're dismissed. Yeah, I think we'll keep them in the dark. Don't exactly trust them. Um, let's go to the shop. I haven't got a lot of money, um, but we didn't use a lot of gems then. If I could maybe buy a couple, that would probably be enough. Welcome to Garby's Emporium of Wonder. Lil, about time you showed up. I've had every mage in town come by the shop today trying to buy up all the power crystals. Really? You mean you don't have any left? I wouldn't have, if I didn't hide a few away from my best customer. I'm your only customer. You were my only customer, but now that I cornered the mage market, I don't know if I'll be able to keep these crystals in stock. Well, the good ones, anyway. The mages didn't seem to have too much interest in the cheapo ones. Hey, by the way, before you get to shopping, this blowtorch you sold me with Fosse carved onto it? I've had the hardest time selling it. Maybe you'll want it back. Might come in handy. <laughs> and I'll sell it to you for just four gold. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna sell it back to him <laughs> for way more. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, well, we're going to sell the motivational post to get a bit more cash in. Um, so I've got, what, seven crystals? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got ten slots, and I can buy three. So I think we'll do that. One, two, three. Uh, mm, I'm not going to buy any of those. There we go. We can fill up our tools tomorrow. Lil, how goes the Battle of the Southern Gate? Same old. How are things around here holding up? Great. Business is better than ever. Something about war and the idea of impending doom really gets people out to the bar. That's good? You bet it is. If this keeps up, we'll finally be able to get this place up to code. Uh. Then we can get rid of the rats. Uh. We don't have rats! 
I mean, we do, but technically they have us. <laughs> Turns out they own the building and we just rent from them. <laughs> but if we make enough money, we can buy out from under them. As far as landlords go, they aren't the worst. I could do without all the hissing. Hey, that reminds me. Lil, you got a letter in the mail. This is going to be from Dad. How did that rem... Never mind. A letter from who? From Hamish. A letter from Dad? Gimme! Hey, Sweet Pea. How's everything back home? I'm doing okay here. I've gotten to know a lot of the guys. Then when they don't come back from battle, I get the chance to get to know a few more. Oop. I miss you. I know you might be scared right now, but don't be. It'll take tougher stuff than this little war to do in your old dad. Please let me know that you're all right. Or even if you're not. I need to hear how you're doing. I love you, Lil. Dad. Love you too, Dad. But what should I write back to him? If I tell him things are tough here, he might worry and get distracted in battle. But if I tell him I'm doing well, he might feel like I don't need him and then get distracted in battle. He's easily distracted. Oh boy, neither answer seems right. Are you talking to me? No. Uh, let's just be positive. Lil will write a letter that suggests everything is going great in order to make her father feel better. Are you sure? Yeah. You don't want him worrying. I don't think things are that bad. There. That should do it. Hey, Arda. Mind making sure this gets to where it needs to go? Sure thing, Lil. Hey, it's, uh... Oh, I've forgotten his name. Well, Fredo. if it isn't my old pal, Lil. Oh, so now you remember me. Always did, kiddo. Just had to play it cool while at my legitimate place of business. My former legitimate place of business, that is. Oh no, what happened? Tough to say, kid. Could have been any number of things. Change in management, downsizing on account of the war. It was probably the illegal gambling operation you were running out of the concession stand. Tough to say, kid. Regardless, I'm here on official bookie business. I've come to collect a debt from Hamish. Sounds about right. How much does he owe you? 30 gold, and I've got the marker to prove it. Sorry, I don't have that kind of money on me. Either come back tomorrow and I'll see if I have the money, or wait for Hamish to come back from the war. Eh, both those options sound lousy. Tell you what, let's forget the debt altogether. But tell Hamish I ain't taking any more of his markers. See you around. Probably a good thing. Lil, I'm being discreet. Isla bet me five gold that I couldn't steal a bottle of fizzy when Arda's distracted. How are you planning to do that? I figure if I wait long enough, one of the rats will bite her and she'll freak out and maybe run around a bit. Solid plan. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's probably it for the day, so why don't we go to bed and see, uh, <laughs> see the results of all our decisions today. <laughs> I think I've done everything I... Yeah, hit the hay. Reunited with his darling whelp, Grumpkin T. Dankworth was a changed man. Together the two travelled through Caladar, sailed Lake Inez, and even summered in Fireball Canyon. He laughed as he had never laughed in all his days, and the nights were filled with food and wine, music and love. <laughs> they ran, holding hands through fields of flowers. On one such sprint, Grumpkin clutched at his chest. His heart had overflowed. Uh, more accurately, he had suffered a massive heart attack. Try as he might to revive his former master and now true love, Welp was unable to resuscitate the old man. A simple funeral was held, and the widower Welp counted himself lucky to have ever had such a love as this. As for his substantial riches, they were held by Mr. Dung, head of BS, until such a time as Mr. Dankworth's will was read. The old man had donated the entirety of his fortune to the GLA. A small flower garden was built in his honour outside of their headquarters. Thanks to his timely arrival back in the sprawl, Julian was able to prepare a lav lavish birthday party for his best friend Gary. Every goblin, troll, halfling, cyclops and mole person who was anyone was there. 
It was a bright spot in what had otherwise been a dark few months for the sprawl. As a birthday present, Julian gave Gary a pure, unrefined power crystal that he'd received from the visiting miners. A glint of its unearthly glow reflected in Gary's eyes as he inserted the powerful crystal into his practice wand. He thanked Julian profusely for this most precious present. It never left his sight from that day on. The next day, Julian presented the plans he was carrying to the city council. These plans detailed an extensive tunnel system to be dug underneath the walls of the sprawl, which would allow food to be secretly and safely moved into the sprawl right under the enemy's nose. After a short period of deliberation, the council realised just how hungry they all were, and unanimously approved the plan. Someone will be arriving to start digging the tunnel system soon, but it's all on the up and up and pretty hush hush. With new plans for bringing food into the city working their way through the bureaucracy of the sprawl, there were enough rations for the refugees from Scarborough to eat, and a space was made for them at the refugee camp springing up and down at the docks. The Duchess was not impressed by her new surroundings, but to be honest she's a very difficult person to please. Swift Justice was visited upon the traitor who lowered the drawbridge of Castle Scarborough in the middle of the night, allowing the enemy to enter and take control of the duchy. The villain was hanged in the town square. Brutal? Certainly, but this is war and it's better to be safe than sorry. Plus, it made for a fine day's entertainment, as there are no video games in the sprawl to keep people amused. There we go. What about the war stuff? Oh, what have we got here? Oh my goodness. Uh... They don't have weapons. Okay. Oh. A Petralian invasion force easily overpowered the garrison stationed at the Sprawl's secret western food depot. The enemy was ordered to burn all of the Sprawl's reserve food stores, not even taking any for their own fam famished population. Our troops were not only defeated but humiliated and mostly dead. Elmer John and Glorianne fought like a cat and dog that used to be engaged until the cat got caught in the arms of another dog. It was very distracting for the soldiers around them and the Sprawl's defeat is attributed to their bickering. Bosco lived out his life in the country. He never loved again. Okay, we're gonna maybe need to replay that. Is it game over? Oh no. Uh, can I not? Leading to the highest Chronometer 3000, where are you? <laughs> Pointless bloodshed sure to scar the psyche of all those involved for years to come. Haunting words from one of the survivors of last night's charity bake sale at the Garden <laughs> District's Haven for the Elderly. And now, news from the war. The battle for the Western Food Reserve Grotto was lost. That is the only detail. Can I use the chronometer? Can I go back? No! Alright, well. Lesson learned, I suppose. Um, hmm. Okay, well, on that bombshell, I suppose we'll leave it there for now. Um, yeah, good on the good on the guardsman front. Not so good on the war drafter front there. Um, never mind. I'm <laughs> Oh God. Anyway, if you enjoyed that, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that'd be great. If you uh, could leave a comment as well, let me know what you think. I mean. It all kind of spiralled off of that first decision to let Elmer John in. And I thought, you know, French Foreign Legion type thing, send him off and, you know, he'll, uh, he'll get over it. Then the, then Glorianne came along and thought, okay, maybe they can go and talk things through and they'll be happy ever after. And obviously them coming through, I couldn't let Boss go in. Um, yeah, if I'd refused Elmer John the first time, I think the opposite would have happened and we'd have been fine. So there we go. Well, lessons learned for next time anyway. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts of that in the comments. And if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, uh, it'd be great if you could do that as well. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.